In this video, we'll see how to calculate confidence intervals for the mean using the graphing calculator. First, we'll look at example 8.2. In this example, we're finding a confidence interval for the mean where we know the population standard deviation. We also don't have the sample data, rather we have summary statistics for it. In any case, to access the confidence interval calculator, hit stat and then go to the right to tests and you'll see starting at 7 the intervals. When you want to find a confidence interval for the mean and you know the population standard deviation you want Z interval number 7. When you want a confidence interval for the mean and you know only the sample standard deviation use number 8. When you want to find a confidence interval for proportions you would go down to A, one prop Z interval. For this problem, we want number seven. You have the choice to put in a list of data. In this case, you tell it where the list is, and you access the list and edit it by hitting stat edit. If you have the summary statistics, then go to stats. In this example, we have the summary statistics. Uh, we're told that we have a random sample of 36. and the sample mean is 68. Notice that it has sigma here for the population standard deviation. And we're told the population standard deviation is 3. The confidence level is put in as a decimal and 90% confidence will correspond to 0.9. And go to calculate and hit enter. We get that. So we are 90% confident that the mean test score is between 67.178 and 68.822. And you would write that out in a sentence. Now this is a long data set, but again, if you had something like 8.3, uh, we would go to stat and, or sorry, to stat and then edit, and then you would actually put all the data in one of these lists. So I would just typically put it all in L1. So put the data in one by one. This is rather tedious, so it won't do the whole thing. But each number needs to be put in here. Enter the number, and then press Enter. And once it's in there, then go back to stat and tests and choose your interval. This time we change to data and we still need to put in the standard deviation for the population. Uh, we're told it's 0.337 and then you tell it where the data is. So I have my data in L1, so second one, tell it L1. Uh, put in your confidence level, it's 0.98. Now this answer is not going to match with the book because I didn't put the full data set in. But everything else we've done is correct. And then hit calculate. And we'd say we're 98% confident that the mean um, SAR for these phones is between 0.8241 and 1.4642. Okay. Um, now let's do the uh, T interval works the same way. You would just be given a data set or summary statistics, but not given any standard deviation for the population. Uh, in this case, you can hit stat and edit, and you can put the data in here. So 8.6. 9.4, 7.9, and so on. Stat, tests, and we go down to T interval, because we're using the T distribution, because we don't know the population standard deviation. You notice when you go into T interval, uh, either in data or in stats, there's no sigma. Now in stats, you do need the standard deviation for the sample. They see an S there. 
for data, it will calculate it automatically. So you just tell it where the data is, and you just put in the confidence level, say 0.95, and then hit calculate. I don't see an example. Now they could give you just the sample statistics. So um, you notice right here in 8.8, .8, the one I started, um, they do calculate that for you. So if you had the sample mean, you could put that in 8.2267, and the sample standard deviation 1.6722 and then the sample size, 15. And those three things are calculated by the calculator if you get put the data set in for you. And then 95% confidence and hit calculate. And you'll see this does match up 7.3 to 9.15. So we're 95% confidence that the population mean sensory rate is between 7.3 and 9.15. Now, one thing we didn't address is finding the sample size. So we'll look at problem 8.7. Population standard deviation is given, it's 3. Uh, we want to be 95% confident that the mean is within 1 inch of the true population mean. So we want the sample to be within 1 inch of the population mean. And how many randomly selected students must be surveyed? So there's no built-in function here. Rather, we just use the formula that is given. So you need to identify what the z-score is that goes along with the confidence level. And if you draw the normal curve and you put 0.95 area in the middle, that will leave you with an area of 0.05 or 5% for the two tails. So we have a picture of that. Yeah, here we go. So you see on the right, 0.95, 95% uh, in the middle leaves you with 5% in the tails. Split that in half and you have 2.5% on the left, 2.5% on the right. And you want to know where those z-scores are that mark off those tails. And that's what your z-value is. And of course it's the same number, but uh, one's negative and one's positive. And we typically use the positive one, but since we're squaring it doesn't really matter. Um, so the, the pictures are drawn here for 95% confidence and 90% confidence. And the numbers are easy to find for those, but it's nice to know the procedure. Um, remember that the calculator will take area to the left of a line and tell you where that line is. So if we were to go to the normal distribution, second bars, and do inverse norm, and you tell it the area to the left is 0.025, right? that's the area for the 95% one, and then use a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1, that will give you your negative one, critical value, so negative 1.96. That's our z value. So we'll take that number and we will square it. And we multiply by the standard deviation. And that is supposed to be 3. And we square that. And then we divide by the error bound. And the error is supposed to be 1 because we want to be the sample mean to be within 1 inch of the population mean. So we're going to allow and the one's not really going to do anything down there, but in general divide by the error um, squared. So this should be the number of people we need and we would round this up. So we would actually want 35 individuals in our survey. Alright, that should get you through 8.1 and 8.2.